This is Case of the Week, Wandering Spleen. I'm Dr. Dan Koval from Radiologist HQ. Let's take a look at the case and then I'll review key learning points at the end. Here we're looking at a CT of the upper abdomen at the level of the liver, and it's done with intravenous and oral contrast, and we can see the left diaphragm here, but then where's the spleen? Instead, we see this clustered small bowel in the left upper quadrant. It looks like jejunum because the small bowel folds, the valvulae conventae are close together, which is typical for jejunum. But where's that spleen? So as we move inferiorly, there's this vascular pedicle here extending to the spleen here in the lower abdomen, upper pelvis. And it's just above the uterus and the ovaries. Now the spleen and the uterus don't normally hang out together, so this is abnormal. Now back at the level of the upper abdomen, there's the pancreatic head here with the portal splenic confluence. And then notice how the pancreatic body and tail are dragged along and fairly along this vascular pedicle. So this is the splenic vein, and then this is the splenic artery adjacent to it. Normally those would extend towards the left upper abdomen, but they're being pulled down. And you see this pancreatic parenchyma surrounding it. So this is that long vascular pedicle leading right to that splenic hilum. Now, as we examine that vascular pedicle, you can see that there's a, some trace fluid surrounding it, some fat stranding, but the vessels themselves are not occluded and we don't see them torsed, right? Here's the splenic vein and the artery again. As we move in fairly, watch those. They don't really wrap around each other. They're just being pulled in fairly right to that splenic hilum and the spleen itself is enhancing normally. Here's the coronal reformatted series and we get a great look at that spleen. It's almost like a mirror image of where it should be, right? In the left of our quadrant here. And again, we see that there's normal parenchymal enhancement. We don't see any infarct. And there's that long vascular pedicle. We can get a great look at it along this coronal reformatted image. There's the splenic vein. There's the surrounding pancreatic parenchyma, the body and the tail being pulled with the vessels. And then there's the splenic artery. But again, we don't see any twisting of that. It's not torsing. And that's probably why the splenic parenchyma is normally enhancing, right? And again, that left upper quadrant is empty of spleen. So on an x-ray, you might be able to see an absent splenic shadow here. You might even see gas within the colon immediately subdiaphragmatic. And if you see a mass in the right lower quadrant or left lower quadrant, that might make you suspicious for the elusive diagnosis of wandering spleen. So here are some key points for wandering spleen, which you can also find in the episode show notes. So this is an extremely rare diagnosis. It usually occurs in patients between 20 to 40 years of age, and it's more common in females. So this patient was actually a 30-year-old female, so fits into that demographic. And what happens is you get this splenic mobility due to congenital or acquired abnormality of the normal peritoneal attachments and suspensory ligaments that will fix the spleen in the left upper quadrant. So it could be due to a congenital absence of these ligaments or an acquired laxity, which can sometimes occur in conditions like pregnancy. We see this more often in multiparous women and also diseases that cause splenomegaly. And what then happens is once the spleen is freed of the shackles binding it to the left upper quadrant, it explores the abdomen. It can migrate to anywhere in the lower abdomen and pelvis, and you might get this long vascular pedicle. And if that pedicle twists, that's when you might get splenic ischemia and infarction if it's not promptly treated. Now, the clinical presentation is quite variable. Patients might become symptomatic if torsion of the pedicle occurs, and they may present with intermittent colicky pain or vague abdominal discomfort, but sometimes the abdominal mass is actually palpable, and if there's infarction, patients may have acute abdomen symptoms. This can mimic other causes of lower quadrant pain like acute appendicitis or ovarian torsion. The treatment is often surgical detorsion and fixation of the spleen, which is splenopexy, but splenectomy might be required if there's infarction of the spleen. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that discussion of the mystical wandering spleen. If you like this lecture, please subscribe to the video podcast or on YouTube. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, click the YouTube community tab or follow us on social media. Until next time, remember, radiology is life.